Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. So in today's video, all of my projects were inspired by the very last project at the end. So my first piece is just a wooden box that I thrifted a good while back and it had a lot of design on it. So it took a couple coats of Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream to cover up those designs. And then I coated it with Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer because I was going to be putting this transfer on. And this transfer comes from the new IOD Lover of Flowers. And this set's got some beautiful flowers, but it also has some beautiful poetry that you can use as well. So I go ahead and put my transfer on and I use the transfer tool to just rub it on and then pull that plastic sheet up. And then when you get it all pulled up, then you just use that plastic sheet and rub over it and that's called burnishing it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a knob for the top of it. And the mold that I'm using, the one right in front of me, is the IOD Bobbles mold, which is actually Christmas ornaments. And I'm using Amazing Casting Resin, which is two parts, equal parts. Part A is clear and part B is yellow. And you stir it up and then you pour it in and it sets up in about 10 minutes. So if you'll notice on that particular mold, you'll see some little foggy parts. And really what that is, is I took a hot glue gun and I went back and forth and back and forth so that when I pour that resin in, that resin will not go past that hot glue and kind of bleed down into the rest of that mold and waste it. Now, those little um, molds that I have off to the side, I always have extra, so I just pour it into those things. Now, I've decided which one I'm gonna use, and while it's drying, I lay like a little screw into it. And then when it sets up, that screw is stuck in there all the way. And then I have to trim off just a little bit down at the bottom. Then I put that little piece of hot glue back in there, and now I'm going to make a double-sided mold. So you go ahead and make one and let it set up. And then you pour it in again. And then you take that mold that's already set up and just lay it on top of it. And just make sure that those two pieces, the part that's in there and the part that you're putting on top, kind of mold together. Once it's all finished, then I just drilled like a little hole in the center of the top of the box. Now, this particular mold is the IOD Laurel mold. And there is like a little medallion right in the middle. And that little medallion is what I'm going to use to put right up underneath that little knob that I made from the Bobbles mold. And I use Dawes Air Dry Clay and I put cornstarch in and then you know, push it down with your finger, and then I go back over it with the credit card. And then once I kind of get it in just the right place, then I use Tight Bun Thick and Quick and to put it on with before I put that little knob in up at the top. Now, once I laid it down there, it, you know, I kind of had to wiggle it around just a little bit to make sure that it was in the right spot. And then I go ahead and I screw it in there just a little bit because I want to make sure um, that it all kind of looks together and I didn't push it down too hard into that clay. Now, this is the part that I, I guess I just forgot to tape. And this is the little laurel wreath that's also on that other mold or the laurel mold. And I make the two pieces that are the laurel wreath and then I make the pieces from that same mold. One is a little crown that I put up at the top and the little piece down at the bottom that connects those two pieces of laurel is the little bumblebee. And I put those on with tight bond thick and quick as well. And then after it sets up just a little bit, then I'm gonna go on and paint it with the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. Now, these little laurel molds, you know, they're a little bit smaller. And so even if, as you're moving it and putting it up there, if it just wiggles or if a little piece tears off, 
it is no problem to just push it back in there and kind of get it all set up together again. Now, the reason that I made this particular box is it's called a joy box. And let me, if you've never heard of that before, let me tell you what that means. Um, when my mom had cancer, um, she had to sit around for a long time and she would get a lot of cards from her friends. And so she just put them in a little pretty box that she had. And as she had to kind of sit around for all those months, as she was recovering, she would just pull those cards out over and over from her friends, and they brought her so much joy. Now, I do not have cancer, um, but I know that there are a lot of special things that I have, like particular a letter from my grandmother, and every time I read it, it just brings me so much joy. And so I wanted to go ahead and make one for myself. Now, on the inside of it, one of the poems from that Lover of Flowers, it's called Pink Rosebud. And it talks about a thousand images of love and grief. And I thought this was a perfect poem to put on the inside of this because the, the things that I will be putting on the inside of the box are things that bring me joy. You know, just old pictures and things like that that I don't have in a picture frame. But, you know, as I set them, if I, you know, sitting off to the side and I want to open it up and look at it, it's just going to be things that brings back really special memories to me. Now, as I was putting that transfer on, you know, sometimes you're going to miss a little spot. So just lay it back down and rub it in and then go back and burnish it again. But it's really easy to get these transfers on. And then once you finish, then you want to spray it again. But before I show it to you all at the end, this is just an old book that I had, and I painted it with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And I'm doing a new trick that I have not done before, but I see a lot of people do it. So I put Mod Podge all on the front of the book. And this is a piece of decoupage paper. And honestly, I've had it for so long, I don't know where I got it. And then um, after that Mod Podge dries and you put that decoupage paper on it, then I just use my little Cricut, um, little heat, um, I don't know what you call it. It's kind of like a little iron. And you just rub all over it. And then that just kind of opens the, or I guess it kind of makes that glue melt just a little bit or it heats it up and then that paper um, automatically adheres to it. And I've not done it before, but it was a lot of fun. Now, I'm making the IOD lock and key mold because I'm not going to do a lot to this book because it's actually made into a little riser. But I want to put something on the spine of the book. Now, if you'll notice up underneath that book, those are those little wooden cups that you can get at Hobby Lobby. And I use those for the feet. And I just glued them on down at the bottom and let them set up really good. And I did that and let it set up overnight before I actually put this particular mold on. Because I wanted to make sure that those little wooden pieces did not move around as I was putting on that particular mold. So I don't want it to move, move at all. So I stack everything, you know, on both sides of that little book so that it's not going to wiggle around and accidentally fall when I'm putting this particular mold on. And once again, I use the tight bond thick and quick. And then once I get it all set on, then I let it set up for just a little bit. And then I go back and I paint it with the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And when you first put it on, it's just a good practice, sort of just kind of dab it on, just a dab at the edges a little bit. Now, you don't have to go on and paint the mold. Some people like to wait until that particular mold is dry all the way to paint it. But I'm just one of those people that like to go ahead and paint it, and it helps to reduce cracking. Now, I'm going to go and paint those little wooden cup little pieces and I'm just painting those with the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And then once all of that gets dry, then I just go back with some gold gilding wax and kind of add some touches to it. So this is my box. And there's some old letters. And I am going to go back and I'm going to put some hot glue over the very edge of that screw. And this is the little poem. And, you know, it's just got some little things in it already. 
but this will be my joy box. And it, it's just something that I will continue to put some sweet memories or sweet letters or, you know, sweet little pictures that my grandkids have picked, you know, colored for me that they want Grammy to save. So I'm sure it will fill up pretty quickly because um, my granddaughters love to color me pictures. And then this is what it looks like when it's closed. And so once I got all of those molds painted and they were good and dry, then I used gold gilding wax and I just rubbed it on to just bring out the detail of those molds. And I just think it's so, so pretty. And I've done this before with that bobbles mold and I just love the way that you can use those IOD molds in so, so many ways. So what do you think? So if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and become part of our family. So my next piece is one of those old drawers that came from those old like Singer sewing machines. And I've had it painted with Rust-Oleum chiffon cream for quite some time. And so I pulled out another flower from that transfer, Lover of Flowers, and I've have already sprayed it with Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer before I put this transfer on. Because if you don't um, put a clear sealer on it, then when you put that transfer on it, then if you are not using a paint that has a sealer in it, a lot of times it will pull up that paint. So I just always make sure that I spray it first with clear sealer. Now I'm going to um, put a, another mold or I'm going to put a mold on the other side of the box. Now, this is an old redesigned by Premium mold that I've had for quite some time. And I really don't even know the name of it. And so it's a really big medallion. And I'm using my DOS air dry clay in this mold. And I put cornstarch in it first. Now, the redesigned molds don't have that little lip on it. So one of the things I like to do when I'm making this mold is I just go ahead and put it in and then I use like an old credit card to kind of smooth it out and then I just like to kind of take my finger and kind of rub it all along the edge of that mold just to make sure that you know there's not any around the outside edges and it I just kind of push that clay right up to the edge of that mold if that makes sense and then because it's really large I use like this little um my mom used to call it a biscuit cutter, but I think somebody told me one time it's for making pastry and things like that. So um, it's just a big piece that I've got, and it's just easy to kind of flip big molds over without, you know, them falling apart. And I put this medallion, and it's on the other side, and I put that right in the middle. And then on that same mold, there's two little swirly pieces, and I put those on either side. So once those have set up for just a little bit, I'm going to go back and paint them. But um, one of the things I want to mention is that when I do paint them, that brush has some really, really soft bristles. And I don't push that paint into that mold. I just kind of dab at it because I don't want to mess with any of the detail. But if you're using a stiff brush, it's probably going to mess up the detail. So it's just a really soft bristle brush. And I am going slow. It's just that I've speeded up this video um, so it doesn't take so long. All right, so now I'm going to make the feet. And I've made these before. And this is the IOD Swags mold. And there's one little piece in it that looks like a little drop, a little teardrop type of thing. So I make four of them. And then... These are some little blocks that I bought at the Dollar Tree, and I glue those on and make sure they're set up really well. Now watch what I do. I take that little mold that's made from resin, and I lay it on the outside of that box. Now that little block is on the inside of that box or on the inside of the bottom where you can't really see it. But it gives it that stability when you set that box up. And then I let those two little pretend legs, if that's what you want to call it, set up overnight before I go and I put the other two legs on. But because I don't want anybody to see that raw wood on those little blocks, 
I go back and I paint those with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And even on the inside of that little bl block, I paint that too. But they've been sitting a good while, so they're not going to move at all. Now I'm, now I'm going back to the other side where that transfer was. And this is a redesign with Prima Mold. And I believe it's called Cherry Blossoms. And I do have a link from that. It's from Micah Daughters. And I'll share the link if you like this mold. I like this mold a lot. And so it's just different blossoms and the stems and the leaves. And, you know, you can just kind of piece it together and use the parts that you want. And you don't have to use, like it might have a flower with a long stem and then it might have like a little bud. But I just kind of piece together what I want. And then as you put it all together on your project, you can't tell that you've pieced it. So I put a little bit on the right and then I put a little bit on the left side. And once again, once it's set up for just a little bit, and I mean from that about, maybe about 15 minutes, then I go and I paint all of those molds. And then now I put a little old wooden knob on it. I just glued it on. Um, I didn't make a mold out of that or use a mold for that. And this is a really old stamp, and it's called Knob Toppers, I think, and it's by IOD, and I just stamp it with one of the little stamps at, that says Paris, and I do that at the very end. And then I go and I put gold gilding wax over all of the detail on all the different molds. And this is the side with the big medallion and the little two swirly pieces on the side. And look at those little legs. Now, this took several days to make because I wanted to ensure that like the legs were really good and set um, before I moved it around at all and, you know, finished it up because that was the most important thing for me was to make sure that those legs were good and strong. And that little piece of wood just supports that little um, resin piece and it keeps it from, you know, kind of like buckling up underneath anything you would put inside of it. And then this is the little knob topper. And if you'll look right up underneath the box, you can see that little block of wood, but I'm okay with that. And now these boxes are really old and um, there's some pieces of the veneer that's missing a little bit, but I love them a whole bunch. And I think that just really adds to the charm of it. So my next piece is a wooden magazine holder. Um, that I thrifted and I painted it with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And so this is a piece of the transfer. Um, and some creators call it Joy de Roses and I've heard other creators call it Joie de Roses, but it's from that new IOD release. And this is just part of this big um, transfer set. And, but on this particular one, there's some little oranges in the transfer set, and I didn't want that to be on this particular part, so I trimmed those off. But I had already sprayed it with Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer just so that the transfer would go on and it wouldn't peel that paint up. And then some of the transfer ended up being up underneath, but I was okay with that. Now, I like to have little pieces of transfer set on the side as well. So this is just another floral from that same set that I'll put over on one side. Because, you know, when people see it, if they don't just see the front to begin with, but they see the side of it, I just think it's really neat to have something on the sides. And the part that I forgot to film was on the very front in that blank space, I used the IOD Kind Disregard stamp. Now, on the very front, on that transfer, is just a little butterfly. So I decided I would just add one little mold, and it's the IOD Monarch, which is all the butterflies. And so I used my Doss Air Dry Clay, and I put cornstarch in it, and then I put it on my Tight Bond Thick and Quick, and I put that on the side. But I'm gonna leave that little magazine holder laying up on its side for just a little bit until that glue has dried. And then I'll go back and paint it with the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. Now I had one little rosebud left, and so 
I decided I would put it right there on the front just to add something extra up at the top. And then I used the IOD Vintage Textures to just use a little bit of stamping and I used Stone Gray Ink because on that transfer set, you can see some little crackle pieces. And so it mimics the crackle that you see in the flowers from this transfer set. And I just think it turned out so, so pretty. And even though I'm not using the same transfer set on all the different pieces today, a lot of the colors just blend to so well together. And I really like that IOD, you know, is able to make different pieces, you know, all work together. Now on this piece, this is a really large piece of decoupage paper. And I've had it for a long time and I really don't know where I got it. I'm sure I've ordered it off of Etsy. And I just kind of had to piece together what I wanted. And this is just a, like a little wooden, I guess you could call it a tray or maybe a little sign that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I painted the outside edge and those little beads were already on there. I painted it with Waverly Moss Green. And once it was dry, I went back over it with white wax, just to kind of soften it up. And then I'm putting down that decoupage paper with Pent Art Varnish and Glue. And I'm about out of it. Um, and I probably will not order it anymore. I'm going to go back and start using Mod Podge again. And then I put down just a little bit and then I pull it back up and put down a little bit more. I don't like to always um, put, you know, all of the glue down at one time. That makes it a little bit harder to put, put it down. And then, you know, if it's not in just the right spot, then you have to pick it back up. And sometimes that's hard. And then I just work my way all around. And then I put on all those little pieces. And then once it's all finished, um, then I will spray sealer with it to kind of coat it and, you know, make it um, so that if I set something on it, it won't get wet. Now, this can be hung up on the wall because there's like a little um, twine rope on the back of it. So that would be something that, you know, you could hang right up above a dresser. But I'm also going to show you that you can use it as like a little tray. So if you wanted to have one of this, a little tray on your dresser to put your jewelry in, then you could take that rope off of the back. But I actually still have that little rope on it, and I just taped it down. So friends, here are all the pieces that I've worked on today, but it's not ready for the end. In just a few minutes, you're going to see what prompted all of these pieces. But look how all of these colors just blend together so, so well. And I just love everything. Now, let me tell you why. Because um, I found a dresser. And um, I wanted to use that transfer set, Joie de Roses, because it's really big. And I wanted to use it on the front of the dresser. And that's going to go in my bedroom. So then from there, then I started making all of these different pieces that will blend together with that dresser. But before we get to the dresser, in the comments below, let me know which one was your favorite. And have you gotten this transfer set? I love it. It's really big and it's got a lot of transfers on it. But it's just beautiful. And actually, I ordered another transfer set because I like this so much. And I'll use it a lot as time goes on. And then you're going to see, you know, where I've turned this little um, sewing machine box around to the other side. And I just think it's so pretty. And I have done this, I think, the third time when I've used these little sewing boxes. And y'all have really liked that I used the little molds to make the little feet on it. And also, um, do you have a joy box? Or do you have a little box that you like to keep special memories in? Okay, so this is what inspired all of these pieces. This is a dresser that I thrifted recently and I picked it out in particular because between the drawers, yes, there is just like a little um, piece of wood trim, but there's um, no detail on it. And so I'm going to actually be using four B 
big sheets of this transfer set, but I won't use um, two of those transfer sets. I use just a little bit of it. So IOD makes it really, really easy to when you've got these big transfers to make them go all together and you it makes it so easy with the little grid lines. So I've measured off exactly where the center of this dresser is. And when I get that first transfer set on, then because it's so big, I just pull that transfer up and I use painter's tape um, to kind of pull that white backing back just a little bit just so that it will stay in place because I don't want it to move at all. And I have to do this out in my, my garage and fortunately it hasn't gotten really hot in North Carolina yet. So it was a lot easier. And initially all I did was I just painted the front of it because I knew that it was gonna take a lot of work to get this transfer set on and then to have to go back and paint the rest of it. So just for the purposes of this video, initially, all I did was I painted the drawers. And the, the little dresser had four different drawers. So I put these transfers on the two middle drawers. And because it's going to go in my bedroom, that was why I used the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. But I have seen some other creators put this same transfer set on different color backgrounds and it's beautiful, but I love all the colors in this transfer set. But it takes just a little bit of extra effort when you start putting those other pieces on the side. And some of that transfer will be on those little pieces between the drawers. And then I extended all the way to the end and then I replaced all the knobs with just some glass knobs that I get at Hobby Lobby. But isn't this just so beautiful? I love it. And I love all the colors. And it's got birds and butterflies and just all of my favorite colors. So what do you think? And do you like to have pieces with transfer sets in your home? Maybe not just on smaller projects, but actually on furniture. And this is where I've started adding all the pieces to it. So I've got my little sewing machine box, and then I've got my little tray, and then I've got a, my little riser over to the side. Now, one of the things that I will do is um, I like to make sure that that paint has set up for a couple days and then I go back and I use furniture wax, which is it's Staples Clear Wax to um, put over that chalk paint and coat it and that gives it the finish. And here's my little joy box and then over to the right I've got my riser and I didn't put little, my little magazine holder in this one, but I just think it's so, so pretty and I love... Um, all of these different pieces and how they blend so well together. So um, this dresser is super heavy, so my husband's going to have to help me get it into the bedroom. Can't do it by myself. And I actually even have to take the drawers out because it's super heavy, and I think it was made out of maple. But when I bought it, um, it didn't have any smells to the inside, so I was pretty tickled. So we are at the end of the video, so make sure that if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and become part of our family, and I will see you in our next video. Have a great week.